of the Benghazi terror attack turning into really a hot topic of conversation on the campaign trail. Republicans suggest the White House is engaging in a cover-up after the administration repeatedly claimed the deadly assault was the result of a spontaneous demonstration. Now, yesterday, as you heard, I just heard on Fox News Sunday, President Obama's senior campaign advisor, David Axelrod, accused the Romney campaign of exploiting the issue for political gain. Uh, Clifford May is president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's also an ideal guest for us today, Cliff, because you served as communication director for the RNC at one time in, in your past career. And you also were a, uh, was, was a correspondent, a foreign correspondent for a little paper called the New York Times. So it's good to have you with uh, uh, that perspective for us today. Talk to us directly, not just weigh in on the, the partisan parts of, of this story. You know, where does one draw the line? Is there a line to be drawn in talking about the Benghazi terror attacks uh, that's appropriate, considering that an ambassador died, uh, regardless of whether or not we're in a campaign, you know, campaign season? Jen, I don't see how you can possibly avoid it. Uh, the two biggest issues have to be the economy and foreign policy and national security. And David Axelrod is a very talented political operative. I understand he would like to change the topic uh, from foreign policy, from what's going on in the Middle East, from what happened specifically in Libya, to whether Big Bird deserves government subsidies or not. But that's going to be hard to do, although not impossible. I'm afraid if you look at the New York Times today or the Washington Post or a lot of other newspapers, you'll see nothing about Benghazi and Libya on the front pages, and that's probably true of some of your competitors as well. But foreign policy is an important subject. I don't think Romney addressed it enough early in this campaign, but now it's in the news. He's got to address it and draw the distinctions between what a, a Romney presidency would look like on foreign policy and national security and the policies, policies that have been in place for the past four well, years. I'd like to get to some of the more of those specifics in a moment, but you mentioned the New York Times. The New York Times has this, this big editorial from the editorial board today uh, that also weighs in on the Benghazi issue, and one could argue that it, it the newspaper is politicizing it. Here's just a portion of it, Cliff. It reads, the ugly truth is that the same people People who are accusing the administration of not providing sufficient security for the American consulate in Benghazi have voted to cut the State Department budget, which includes financing for diplomatic security. So the New York Times is saying the Republicans are to blame because they cut money to embassies and consulates that could be used to better, you know, offer better security. But just listen for a moment to what we heard from the hearing last week. Let's go ahead and roll that sound. Uh, it has been suggested that budget cuts were responsible for a lack of security uh, in Benghazi. Uh, and I'd like to ask uh, 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 Ms. Lamb, you made this decision personally. Was there any budget consideration and lack of budget which led you not to increase the number of people uh, in the security force there? No, sir. Okay, and that's all I need. Thank you very much. So we heard last week from a State Department official, it is not a factor. The New York Times comes out today in its editorial and says, oh, oh but yes, it is. I mean, what do, you, what do you make of that, Cliff? Well, I'm, I, what I make of that, I'm afraid there's nothing I can make of it except that the New York Times editorial page, which is an opinion page, is doing some campaigning here. Uh, there's simply no factual basis for the idea that there was insufficient security in Libya on the anniversary of 9-11 because of budget cuts at the State Department. That's erroneous. Now, you can ask the question, and I think the news media ought to uh, ask the question, why was there insufficient security? What didn't the Obama administration perhaps understand about that anniversary and about the state of al-Qaeda? And the Obama administration's position has been for oh, quite some time that al-Qaeda is pretty much dead and that the tide of war is receding. And I would say that our, the research we've been doing, and I, I think most people in, who are seriously covering what's going on in the world would say neither of those things are true. Al-Qaeda is resurgent in many parts of the world, and the tide of war is not receding. In fact, Wars are not tides. They don't recede. Their wars are either won or lost. So, so Cliff, let's go to the big picture issue. One of the reasons why Libya matters so much is that it shows us or gives us something to look at as to how our country is approaching the Middle East and North Africa in this post-Arab Spring era that we're in right now. Are either candidate, have either candidate mapped out for us enough, articulated enough to us what their, their policy will be over the next four years if they take control of this country. I think we know, I would say we know that Obama's policies have been insufficient. There have been a, drones have been used to kill a lot of terrorists, but drones alone are not a strategy. I think uh, Governor Romney has begun to outline 
the, the, I, the, the basic infrastructure of his policy, but we don't know as much about it as we should. I think he has some sense that we are fighting a war against not just al-Qaeda and not just its affiliates, and also, by the way, Iran, which is a jihadi uh, state that is trying to develop nuclear weapons, and that we have to, at the end of the day, also fight this ideology that is still ascendant, and it's the, what I would call and others would call the jihadi ideology, which says that by any means possible, uh, the, the other nations, America, Israel, the European nations, must submit to the Islamists, to the jihadists, to uh, to those that see themselves as their superiors. Now, by the, I've got to say, not all Muslims believe in this by any means, but the Iranians do, Al Qaeda does, and a lot, and the Muslim Brotherhood does as well. This is the challenge we face, and I think it's very important that President that that President Obama, if he remains president, address it squarely. And Governor Romney needs to show that he understands this as well. I feel more confident there, but I think there's a lot more he could say about this. Sounds like good material for another segment as well, Cliff, as we continue to watch the, the evolving uh, events in that part of the world. Thank you so much for the time today. We appreciate it. Thank you. We will.